finish up Romans chapter 1 this morning and we'll get into chapter 2. Can you hear me? Do I have volume here? I can't hear, I can't hear it. So, All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again we do thank you for the opportunity to be here. Father, we're thankful uh, also for your word. We're thankful for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father. We just pray as we uh, study the book of Romans, God, that you'd give us light in, in everything that we cover. Father, I pray, God, that you would use me uh, to teach the saints, Father. And again, we pray for all the services today, for our pastor, for all who enter the doors here, Father, that they might uh, hear something that they need, Father. Again, we're a hungry and a needy people. We need you all the time, Father. And uh, we're just thankful, God, that we have this book and place to meet and uh, uh, that we might learn the wonderful uh, words of life, Father. And we just thank you for them. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Romans chapter 1. And last week, now I can hear myself. <laughs> it's a little loud. I don't know, is this on? Okay. Okay, Romans chapter 1. And... Uh, Last week we were down towards the end of the chapter. And again, we were looking at this. I'm still not there yet. And again, we've seen this list of sins. And we're going to go to, uh, let me get my notes out here. 1 Timothy chapter 3 in a minute. And I was talking uh last week about verse 31 it says without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable and merciful who knowing the judgment of god that they which uh commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure also or pleasure in them that do them and uh again i want to look at first or second timothy chapter three because uh Paul mentions it here, too. Again, he's got a list here of sins. And again, when we look at this thing, I mean, you're going to find yourself in there somewhere. And uh, interesting when we go into Romans 2, but we'll talk about that when we get there. But in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, um, he begins and he talks about this. He says, This know also that in the last day perilous time shall come. And again, I believe we are in last days today, and, and perilous times are here. And uh, again, we've seen this type of behavior many times at the ends of, uh, uh, as a country might deny the Lord, you know, and uh, they become more wicked. And again, I talked about it last week, uh, the downward steps of mankind left to their own. I mean, basically, we're just... Sinners, we're, gonna, we're not going to get better on our own, amen? Without the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not going to improve in any way, shape, or form. Um, though man thinks they are, again, uh, but this sort of explains it. It says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, and this is where we are today, covetous, boasters, bro proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, 
without natural affection. There's a natural affection. I talked about that last week, a little bit about unnat or not having natural affection. And again, that really applies a whole lot of different things. I mean, we just don't have the natural love and care that we ought to have one towards another and towards life and towards uh, the things of God. And basically it's become, because we've become self-centered, we're all about us, amen? And I mean, that to, to some degree, I mean, we as Christians have to watch this as well. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, again, many Christians uh, uh, have this problem as well. They become very selfish in the day and age we live in. Though they might be saved, I says we need to check ourselves constantly by the Word of God. And again, sometimes even as Christians, we can uh, find ourselves in, in these this list of sins that Paul has listed here. But he goes on, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. And again, if there's a day and age when we see that, it's now. Amen. People love, the, love pleasure more than they love God. And again, uh, again, that even comes down to Christians. Love pleasures more than they love God. Okay. Again, verse 5, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It says, from such turn away. And again, we can see that with all false religion and stuff. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. How many people you know that claim to be a Christian who really don't even look to the Word of God for truth, you know, or instruction in righteousness? It's very important that, again, like I mentioned last week, many men create make God who they want him to be rather than who he is according to the word of God. I mean, how many times you hear, you know, about how God loves you and how God just wants the best for you in this life, and, and I'm sure he does, but they just take have a false balance on that, and they don't talk about him being a righteous, holy, and a just God. I mean, the wrath of God is because God is just. There's got to be uh, payment for for man's sin. Amen. And of course, uh, again, if you're saved here, you find that in the Lord Jesus Christ, but it was a, it wasn't a cheap payment. I mean, it would cost him his precious blood. God's precious blood had to redeem us from sin. So again, uh, 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 God is just and he's holy. And, and you got to understand that we can't create in, in our mind who we want God to be or who we want the Lord Jesus Christ to be because man always wants him to be just this loving thing that's going to forgive him for everything. And I, I know he will forgive you for all your sin. But again, he's just and holy and he'll forgive us when we come to him Amen. and want wanting a forgiveness and want to live right for him. Again, uh, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, you can, you can talk to Christians all the time and ask them who, who Jesus Christ is and they, they won't ascribe to him any of the attributes of God. They, 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 uh, have, uh, in their own mind who they make them out to be. But he goes on, they have the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. It says from such turn away. It says for the, for of this sort, are they which creep into houses, lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with uh, divers' lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth? And, and again, we live in a day and age where uh, that's man loves education. They're ever learning, always wanting to, you know, continue to... Uh, to gain education, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of truth. That's because they're looking to man for their education. Amen. We need to be educated in the word of God. Amen. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of times, and again, Christians sort of do the same thing. Sometimes they, they, they look at their degrees and this type of stuff and, you know, and, uh, man, you need to be a student of the word. Amen. It doesn't matter. I mean, <laughs> You need to make sure that relationship is right between you and God and that you're educated of the Lord rather than educated of man. It doesn't matter what man thinks of you. It's where you stand with God and God can use you. Amen? Amen. And whether, whether the world thinks that you're eligible or not, you know, God will use you because the world, I mean, they're enmity with God. 
I mean, uh, you know, I, I've known, I've, I don't have a formal education. I mean, I've, I've gone to Bible Institute, church Bible Institutes, and I, I think that's probably one of the best places for you to get an education is sitting underneath a preacher that studies the Word of God and spends time in the Word of God. That's where I got my education from, was other preachers teaching me the Word of God and, and through my own study of the Word of God. And... Uh, but I know I've talked to other people that have their degrees and this type of thing, and, and they sort of, you know, will pat the little guy on the head because, you know, he's not really properly educated. Let him just go on his way, especially when they don't agree with, with the form of doctrine that I got in the Bible. Of course, the biggest thing is rightly dividing the word of truth, being a King James Bible believer. Man, they'll dismiss you right away if, they, if you claim to do that because, you know, you know, you know, you don't look to, uh, you know, have the Old Testament saints look into the cross and we look back to the cross. And so we rightly divide the word, see what the word of God says and try and apply it correctly. And uh, uh, again, there's so many people that don't look at it that way. And, and, and uh, you know, they just try and bunch all the dispensations together and say, yes, yeah, the blood of Christ, you know, and everyone was dependent upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, I agree it is the blood of Christ, but how did you get it applied, amen? The Old Testament saints didn't have it applied just by simply by faith in Jesus Christ when they didn't even know who the Messiah was. They were waiting for him. The blood hadn't been shed yet. So they had a different form of doctrine that they believed than we believe today. And I mean, it just takes some study in the Word of God and believe in the Word of God over, over men's doctrines to, to do that. And again, in many cases, I was taught wrong, but um, fortunately, I had some good men of God around me to teach me the truth and, and a book that I could believe in 100%. Amen. And uh, again, because again, they're ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of truth. He goes on in verse 8 there and says, uh, in, in 2 Timothy 3, he says, uh, uh, Now as uh, Jannes and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these men, or do these also resist the truth. Uh, men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. And it says, But they shall proceed no f further, for their folly shall be manifest on all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast... Uh, fully known of my doctrine, manner of life, purpose of faith, or purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came to me at Antioch and at Iconian, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of uh, them all the Lord delivered me. Amen. And there's Paul's testimony before them. Amen. He had a testimony uh, and and of course, the deliverance of the Lord as well, you know. And again, uh, uh, he goes on to say, he says, Yea, and all them that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And again, uh, that's where we are, the day and age we live in. And I understand this has going, been going on through history. They had, you know... Uh, uh, evil seducers uh, waxing worse and worse throughout history, amen, and will continue. Uh, I mean, even, even, even through the kingdom, when Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning with a rod of iron, there's going to be uh, men there that are evil, amen, and they show up. Again, you see them at the end of the, the kingdom uh, when they surround the camp of the saints, amen. So, again, we're going to have evil men with us continually. Yeah, but again, back to Romans chapter 1, he talks about, he says, knowing the judgment of God and they which commit such things are worthy of debt, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And as we get into chapter 2, it'll, it'll sort of uh, clear that, uh, we'll clear that up a little bit. But uh, again, who knowing the judgment of God that they are, uh, which commit such things are worthy of death. And I was looking at the uh, references here. and Actually, he takes me to uh, Deuteronomy uh, in chapter 32, talking about being worthy of death. And um, uh, it starts in verse 1. Well, he, the reference here is in verse 7, but I'm going to start in verse 1. And again, underneath, under the law of God, again, uh, 
uh, it talks about different sins here that are abominations to the Lord. It says, uh, Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord uh, thy God any bullock or sheep wherein is a blemish or any evil or evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. If there be f found among you uh, within any of thy gates which the Lord God giveth thee, man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and hath served other gods or worshipped them, either the sun or moon, or any of the hosts of heaven which I have not commanded, and it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true, and the certain thing uh, that such an abomination is wrought in Israel. Thou shalt bring forth that man or that, that woman which have committed wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. Uh, the hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards uh, the hands of all the people so shall put uh, the evil away from among you. Okay, so again, it's talking about really, the, uh, you know, uh, again, it has to be at the hand of two witnesses that one uh, will be put to death. And again, there were some things they could commit, some sins they could commit uh, that were... Uh, uh, that were uh, an abomination to the Lord, that, again, though there was nothing, they, all they could do was put him to death. There was no forgiveness for that particular sin. I'm thankful that everything's forgiven in Christ Jesus, amen, no matter what sin it is. And by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be forgiven for sin. <laughs> but I just thought I'd bring that up again. Under one witness, they couldn't be put to death, but under two or three. So you had to have two or three witnesses for the sin that they had committed to put them to death. But it goes on and talks about uh, having pleasure in them that do them. And again, you know, people like will, will flock to other people that like the same sin that they do. They have pleasure in righteousness. And for one thing, they do that because they can justify themselves in it. Amen. Christians do that. We, we tend to do that. You know, we see brother so-and-so and he does this and, well, he does it, you know, so I can, I can do it and we'll justify it. And again, we compare ourselves among ourselves, but the Bible tells us that's not wise. But we, we tend to do that because we want to justify our sin in many cases instead of, uh, again, looking to the Word of God and letting God, you know, tell us, you know, how to judge and stuff. Again, we need to do righteous judgment according to the Word of God when it comes to any sin. Amen. And again, I, th I think, and again, I've been amongst Baptist churches my whole life, and, and some of them that I've been part of have been more uh, uh, legalistic than others. And uh, again, I, I've found that quite often that people judge themselves according to, you know, one another, in in a lot of a lot of times and again you know i i tell you what i got i got enough uh, enough uh to do just judging myself and taking care of myself than looking at anybody else in here and worrying about what you're doing amen i mean because i gotta wa watch out for my walk i can't change your walk you know and again, I understand if, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes a brother or sister in the Lord needs some help, amen? And, uh, uh, and again, we do that when we have to, but uh, for the most part, amen, just worry about you, amen, and your walk with God. If we all worry about our walk with God, um, you know, the church would be a whole lot better place. But I've seen, I've seen people walk out of church and leave church because they were condemned of a brother or something that they didn't feel the wrong. I've seen Christians where one brother said, you know, I, I, I knew a couple of young guys that went to Honduras with me years ago. And the one brother had a, a son and had some uh, physical, was born with some physical problems. And I don't even think that his son's alive today. It's many years ago, but 
they, with, with that particular illness, a uh, child would only live maybe about 14, 15 years. And, the, and these two guys were really good friends. And the one brother said, well, you know, that's a judgment of God. And he had no business. And the one brother that said that called me. And he says, yeah, I told him it was a judgment of God on his life. And, uh, he's, yeah, and I mean, he called me crying. And he says, he said, I hurt, I hurt my brother. He said, I asked for forgiveness for what I said to him. And he says, and he said he forgave me. He said, but things will never be the same. He said, I offended him and they'll never be the same. So we got to be careful. And I'm just use that as an extreme example. But I mean, we could hurt our brothers and sisters in the Lord uh, by, you know, uh, being offensive to them when, especially when, when we don't know all the facts. Amen. You don't know. You don't know why people do the things they do many times. You don't know everything that involves their life, amen? And so, again, I understand being uh, a righteous judge and stuff like that, and, it, and uh, I'll hit a couple other verses about judgment as we go on, and I understand or try to understand everything that pertains to judgment, but, again, I got more important things, or I'm busy, I'm busy with my own walk before God, and, and really... I mean, I am concerned with yours, but I'm not going to be telling you what's right, and what's wrong, and stuff like that. You need to deal with God on that. I'm concerned that, you know, I want to see you do well. I want to see you grow in the faith and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be able to worship with you and, and enjoy the fellowship with you and that type of thing and, and see you grow and, and this type of thing. But it's not my business. Your walk with God is really between you and God. I can't change that. You can't change any other, anybody else's walk other than by encouraging in the, them in the Word of God. But anyway, in Romans chapter 2, it goes on to say in verse 1, it says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whatsoever thou judgest, uh, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou judgest, uh, for thou that judgest doest the same thing. And again, uh, Paul is really, what he's doing is bringing uh, these Romans to a point where they all are guilty before God. And again, he talks about the judgment here too. Um, and in chapter 2, uh, again, I like uh, uh, Brother Hoffman's got a few notes here, so I'll use them. It says, the accusation of being judgmental stems from a judgmental person. Everyone judges, but the Lord God admonishment is admonishes proper judgment again we have to have proper judgment and math and he uses matthew 7 and begins in verse 1 he says judge not uh that ye that ye be not judged for with what uh, judgment ye judge ye shall be judged and with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you again and why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother eye, uh, eye but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye or wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thy own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast a beam out of thine own eye, and then uh, shalt thou see clearly to cast the moat out of thy brother's eye. So again, he's telling you to check yourself before you go checking out your brother. Amen. And again, that's important. Um, and of course, John 7, 24, he says, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Amen. So again, we've got to judge righteously. And again, when it comes to the judgment that you're going to judge as a Christian, what you need to do is judge what you hear. The preaching that you hear, the teaching that you hear, you need to give that righteous judgment. Do I listen to this? I mean, you could, I mean, you could listen to all kinds of preachers and, I mean, you could listen to Christian radio and probably 80% of what you hear on there, of the preachers that you hear on there, some way, in some form, they're going to put out some false information. Uh, you know, I mean, if you listen to them, you'll say, uh, you know, that's sort of questionable. And you judge it, therefore, by the Word of God to know, you know, right from wrong. That's, um, um, oh, I'm trying to think, uh, uh, Oh, uh, the, the Bereans, that they were more nobler because they searched the scriptures 
daily to see if these things were so. I mean, they did judgment according to the Word of God to hear whether the things they, they or to see whether the things they heard were so. Amen. So we need to do righteous judgment there. Um, again, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, it says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he is judged of no man. Okay? In uh, uh, John 12, 48, it says, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Amen? So that's if you reject it, it'll be judged in the last day. The thing is, what happens with us, we get judged by the Word of God right now. If you're, you know, if you're into the Word of God, you're getting judged at this point in time. You know, and, and if you take heed to the judgment that's given there, you do righteous judgment and, uh, and take care of that thing. You know, anything between you and, and, and God and try and get that right. And then you'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ and he'll say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. If you judge now and judge yourself now as you're going through this life. But again, again, Paul's trying to uh, uh, really bring in, bring in uh, uh, man into a point where they are sinners before God. And... Uh, yeah, again, you gotta you gotta convince someone that they're a sinner to get them saved. I mean, that's just the way it is. Again, if we even preach sin, those of you that are street preachers, when you preach against sin, you're preaching against sin on the street to get them to the point where they're condemned before God. And then again, at the same time, you gotta give them the solution uh, and let them know about the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember one time, my uh, my dad came to church, and it was like the first day we got our our church building years ago. My dad came there, and I I preached about salvation. And then afterwards, the Lord pricked my heart because my dad was sitting there lost at that point in time. He was lost, and uh, during the invitation, he walked out of the church. But um, the the thing was. I, I was convicted. I, I preached about the Lord Jesus Christ and preached, you know, about salvation, but I never got anybody in the place of realizing that they were a sinner before God and they needed the Lord Jesus Christ. I never got them into to that point where, where they're like, oh, you know, in the situation, I'm lost and undone without Christ, and He's the only way. So, um, and, and I realized at that point in time, that's very important to get the, the individual lost. I mean, when you, especially when you're dealing with religious people, amen, they think they're all right. And so you got to get them to a point and, and point them out. And that's what Paul's doing here, essentially, is letting them know that they're lost and undone without, without Jesus Christ. And, uh, but uh, again, uh, verses 2 through 5, it says, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And think is this, O man, that judges uh, them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee? to repentance. I mean, you look at that verse and you're thinking, man, I mean, you know, it's the goodness of God, the long suffering of God that leads us to repentance. I mean, God's uh, to the lost. God's have been good to them. Amen. You don't get what you, I mean, you're not getting what you deserve while you're walking this way. He gives you chance after chance after chance and shows himself to you mightily. Again, conscience even bearing witness, and Paul talks about that later on. And, uh, and uh, man, I mean, you know, we're undeserving uh, of, of this great salvation. But again, uh, and so the goodness of God leadeth us to repentance. It says, but after thy harness and penitent heart, treasure us up unto thyself the wrath against the day of the wrath and revelation of righteous judgment of God. And again, uh, through those several verses I, I just read there, basically he's, he's telling you, you're racking up a debt that you cannot pay, amen? 
And I mean, that's where we come to. And then Paul's trying to bring you to that point. And again, when I, I, I talked about preaching when my dad was there, I, was, I didn't tell him, you're, you've racked up this debt that you cannot take care of. You know, and that's important that we do that. Amen. And that's what Paul's doing here is telling you, man, you got a debt that you cannot pay. And, uh, and uh, it's a... Uh, uh, I'm just thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ. He goes on to say, he says, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Amen. I'm, you know, and uh, uh, for the unrepentant sinner, I mean, you're going to be, I, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that in Christ, um, I'm not going to get what I deserve. Amen. Because I deserve a, a home in hell, amen. Um, I'm going to read uh, Brother Hoffman's note again here. He says uh, here, he said, the, righteousness, the righteous judgment of God occurs partially on the earth, but the final judgment will occur at the great white throne judgment. He says, the accountability of man uh, to God is mocked by the professors of higher learning. He says, the questions of these scoffers are, where do the heathen go? What about the little children? What happens uh, to the heathen without the Bible? The heathen have much more sense, he says, than the said professors. God created conscience as a check on wrongful action, but the conscience can be defiled, seared, and weakened. Uh, pagans understanding the judgment of violating more uh, moral laws. He says, when a Gentile follows his um, good conscience, God reveals light to him. When the light is accepted, more light is revealed. Light rejected becomes lightning. God does not charge a person with sin unless there is a law established in the heart and the mind. And this is often called the age of accountability. Children prior to this age and understanding are safe in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And again, I know a uh, pastor just mentioned that uh, last week when he was talking about the age of, an ac of accountability. And again, uh, again, he's talking about righteous judgment. And then again, he's talking about conscience here. And uh, so... Uh, Again, in verse 6, it says, Who will render every, to every man according to his deeds, to him by patient continuance and well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them uh, uh, that are contentious and do not obey the truth, uh, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Okay, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also the Gentile, but glory and honor to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respecters of persons with God. And again, now he's going to get a little bit more into the Jew and the Gentile and the difference there. Because again, the Jew, the Jew grew up having the law. They were taught the law, you know, as a, uh, you know, walked with the Lord or, or tried to walk with the Lord. They were, they were taught under the law where the Gentile had no law. But again, we both have a conscience. And he, he will talk about uh, uh, that in the next few verses in verse 12. Uh, again, when he talks about there's no respecters of persons with God, what he's, really, he's talking about is, again, between Jew and Gentile. And uh, so we'll see Paul brings that out as he goes on. He says, for as, for as many have sinned without the law, also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. It says, for not uh, the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. When the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things which are contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts of the meanwhile accusing or excusing one another. Okay, so again, they have their conscience. Again, a conscience can be seared, though. That's why it's so much better to have a book, amen? Again, have the law, and again, um, uh, to give us righteous judgment. But again, 
Uh, it, again, you don't have to teach a child not to steal. He just knows if he does that, he'll, he'll feel guilt about taking something that doesn't belong to him. Or someone, for instance, taking the life of another person, they just know that's wrong. You know, it's, unless maybe in self-defense, they just know it's wrong. Uh, your heart knows that. Or whatever you sin, I mean, um, you know, if you go back to when you were a child, you know, you, you knew what was right and what was wrong to a degree. Amen. I mean, you understood it. That's like Pastor mentioned the other day. Or, uh, before a kid comes to that knowledge, he might run out in the room naked. And then later on, he gets to that point where they understand they are naked and they feel that shame and, and, and that type of thing. I remember my kids going through that as well. Um, and uh, I, again, it's because their conscience is telling them that. Okay, and again, that's about the time when they, um, especially as Christians, start understanding uh, uh, what, what uh, righteousness is. But anyway, um, in verse uh, 14, or verse 15, it says, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or excusing uh, one another. In the day God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Behold, thou art a Jew and resist in the law and makest thy boast of God and, uh, and knowest his will and approvest the things that, that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law and art confident and thou uh, thyself art a guide of the blind, a light uh, of them which are in darkness an instructor of a foolish, uh, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and the truth in the law. He says, Thou therefore which teaches another, teachest now not thyself. Thou that preachest uh, a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrifice? or commit sacrilege, excuse me. Thou makest thy boast of thy law, uh, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles uh, through you as it is written. For circumcision verily uh, profiteth if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Again, now he's talking, really get more into the Jew and the Gentile. There's these, the Jew should know the law of God and live after the law of God. And again, um, them being, knowing the law of God, them preaching and teaching one thing, but them, they themselves know they're a sinner before God. Amen. Know that they don't keep the law. They become really a... a an abomination of God there. It says, uh, uh, where was that? In Okay, the name of God is blasphemed, it says. They, they blaspheme the name of God among the Gentiles in verse 24. And I was thinking about that, and it wasn't too long ago. Of course, I was in the book of Samuel, and I was thinking about... Uh, blaspheme in the name of God. And again, these are men or people that could be ministers of the Word of God or the law of God, but yet they're not doing the same things. And again, uh, uh, you know, in the day and age Paul lives, his biggest enemies were those that, that were supposed to be living a righteous life before God, amen? And they condemned him many times, and I mean, trying to put him to death, do whatever they can to hinder his ministry. But I was thinking of uh, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 2 um, when uh, uh, Eli had his sons, Hophni and Phinehas. This is in uh, verse 22. It says, Now Eli was very old and heard all, his, uh, all that his sons did unto Israel and how they lay with the women that, were, that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of, hear of your evil doings by all this people. He says, Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord... Uh, 
would slay them. And again, here you got ministers of the things of God and they transgressed before the people. And again, they became, they became a blaspheme, uh, blaspheming to the, to the Lord. And again, we see that. How many times you witness to somebody and talk to them and they'll bring up these TV preachers that they say, oh, they're after your money, they're after this, they're after, you know, and don't believe them because of, uh, uh, you'll have a hard time dealing with people because they've watched some preacher on TV or this preacher did that or that preacher did that, you know, and they'll always bring up and find um, a reason. They find themselves a reason because someone blasphemed against the Lord by the life they lived and not righteous judgment, you know, not judging themselves righteous. And again, that's what he's talking about with the Jews here. Uh, again, because they sin against God for, he says, for their circumcision verily profiteth. And it says, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Again, if you're say because you're of the circumcision you got to keep the whole law amen and, and and if you break one point of the law you're guilty of the law he says therefore if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision and what paul's trying to do he's trying to put jew and gentile on the same plane here is what he's trying to do and uh, he says and shall not the uncircumcision uh, which is by nature if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter of the circumcision does transgress the law. Okay, so again, you look at the law. Do you transgress it at any point? You're guilty of it. Amen. He says, for, for he is not a Jew which is uh, one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and that circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Amen. God knows the heart. Amen. God knows whether you're right with him or not right with him. God knows if you're walking with him. And again, these Jews at that point in time, they didn't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but then they had a form of righteousness, but they were denying the power thereof. You know, they, they're trying to walk and look godly, and, and they boast themselves of great things. And, you know, it's sort of like um, um, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, you know, and he, he talked about uh, uh, the men praying and stuff, and one will pray, and I'm glad I'm not as a heathen and doing this, and he's lifting himself up for, you know, and he's got his, he's judging himself righteous you know, according to his own statutes rather than the things of God and saying, yeah, I'm pretty good and, you know, and, uh, and condemning those that are under or maybe not doing exactly what he's doing. And again, he's boasting himself and showing himself, but, uh, and then Jesus, of course, he condemned him, but then the one that's, you know, uh, the other man that said, forgive me for I'm a sinner, and I know I messed that up, but, uh, uh, you know, and Jesus, Jesus uh, uh, you know, uh, lifts that one up because, again, he's doing righteous judgment of his own life. And again, so, again, what he's doing here is comparing the Jew to the Gentile, the religious here, to the man that never had religion. It's a whole lot different when you're doing yeah, at that point in time when you're doing with a, dealing with a Jew versus a Gentile. Again, a, Gen, a Jew he had and grew up with the knowledge of God. The Gentile, I mean, they're just a bunch of pagan, a bunch of heathen that really don't know anything about God. They didn't grow up with that. And again, that's who we are, you know. And, and again, we're, we're, we've been grafted in, and we'll talk about that more as we go in, through the book of Romans. But uh, it's interesting how, again, he's bringing Jew and Gentile down to the same level. And I'm running out of time here, and uh, we'll talk more about this next week. But let's pray, and we'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. We're thankful for your book. Lord, we just pray you bless the service to come. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.